Hello, this is Kay and Dance. And my friend Jenny. And we are here on Easter week. We are. And it has been an eventful week. Yes. And people probably thought, where have we been? I Why know. have we not shouted out? First of all, we're close. Closer than we've ever been. But yes. we don't really have the ability to go live yet. No. Or a community wall. We need a thousand subscribers. Yeah. We're very close. Thank you for anyone who yes. has subscribed. Yes. Thank you for watching, commenting, subscribing. Right. We appreciate it. So we just couldn't come out and make a quick video. No. But I was off. You had, you were off. I was off. You were off. So I was off when I got the news that Lori Daybell was yes. competent to stand trial. Yes, yeah, she called me. I, oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, one of our subscribers sent me a message, like, you know, commenting on something and said, Lori has been restored. And I almost thought, mm, uh, I want to believe it. I want to believe it. But um, so then I went and KJ and Crusher K and Big E and the L mom came in and they were having a, a live. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I listened to the entire thing. I, I would not have normally been able to do that if I would not have been off. That's true. That's true. And um, so it was true. Um. It makes us have so many more questions. Oh, yes. And, um, but I, first I want to talk about that. I want, I want to talk about Crescia K on there, pouring oh, her heart gosh. out. You listened to it. I did. I told you to listen to it. Um, it broke my heart. Yes, my, me it too. broke my heart. Um, I mean, I, I, I can't even. You know, this case is, we've talked about it. It's multifaceted. Mm -hmm. There's so many angles that you can look at it from. Yeah. Um, just the the actual players in it, the cult members, the victims, um, the multi-states that it has touched or covered. Mm -hmm. Then you, you get the the media involved in it. And then you get YouTube people wanting to talk about it and discuss all these angles of this case or things that maybe they know a little bit more about than the general public. Mm -hmm. And so to try to help people. Because we're trying to make sense of something that don't make sense. That's right. Because it, it doesn't make any it sense. It doesn't make any sense. So that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. And I think, you know, we, me and you were talking and you said something very true is so many of these cases, we talk about after. We talk about after everything's done, the the court, the trials have are finished, and it could be sometimes years later before people are talking about it. But just to see the vulnerability of Kresha K. Mm -hmm. And she's just right one person. In, yes. Right in the center of it. And... I mean, just the horrible stuff, you know, she was talking about everything going on in her life even before that, you know, with her, uh, Jason, I believe, she's talking about a thoracotomy. He'd had, I mean, she had all this stuff going on and then, and then this hits like a, I mean, it had to hit like a Mack truck. I can't even imagine. It's just terrible. Right. What, what they're all going through and just seeing it as it unfolds. In the raw. In the in, raw. That's right. That's the raw in emotion. The raw. That's what She's it is. On there live getting it, sort of as we're getting it. Um and really because she's opening up more mm -hmm. on the through the YouTube, mm -hmm. I think um you know, I don't know about does she have people who are really coming at her? I would hope not. I know. I hope not um, either. With negative comments or anything like that. But um, I think she's got more comfortable. And I think that she can feel that this community really cares about this case. And so, therefore, we care about her. Yes. We care about them. We care about Kay and Larry. We care about the victims. Um we care about making change going forward. Um, 
Yeah, we want to do anything we can to, right. you know. To shed a light on this and, and hopefully this won't happen again. That's right. That people will, you know, when the police hear these crazy stories that sounds crazy because Lori was crazy, they'll listen and do something before these horrible things happen. Well, maybe they need more training in actual mental disorders like mm -hmm. narcissism and psychopaths mm -hmm. and sociopaths when they do come in contact with them. Because, I mean, she was in, involved with these players in the court system and the legal system for years. For years. And um, nobody was able to stop her. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, that really just... Oh, it just broke my heart. Me too. Me too. Broke my heart. Um, you know, and of course, I did see where Annie Cushing was going to have a... She was going to talk. She was going to have her, her thing. and She was going to talk about, I guess, the Cox family. And this just goes to show you. I, I think it is evident in a lot of things, but this case really shows it, right? Good versus evil, mm -hmm. right? So here's Lori found competent. It's not really, you know, you're not joyous like having a party about it. No. Because it just means that hopefully things are going to move forward and that justice will come. Yes. Um, but justice is not going to be complete. Right? That's right. So, but here's Annie Cushing, and she puts out a thing and says that she's probably going to forgo what she was going to talk about this week out of consideration for them, which I think is, I mean, first of all, all that they did to her brother, what they did to Charles, Tammy, Tylee, and JJ, um, just the way that they demonized her brother. Oh, yeah. I mean, like we said, I mean, we believe that somehow, some way, they poisoned him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really believe mm -hmm. that. I do, too. But at the very least, they destroyed the man. They destroyed him. I mean, he was just a shell of who he was, right? He, he couldn't get anybody to listen to him. He couldn't get anywhere. He just could not get mm -hmm. anyone to pay attention to the alarm bells that he was sending off. Yeah. I mean, here again, I mean, the same thing. Like Charles, nobody listens. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how years this woman went through manipulating everybody. Everybody. Well, she just kept people off balance. You know, she... Well, and like you said, she kept moving around, moving around. And I yeah. think I think that does, because it's harder to tie all those things together, where if it was some somebody in one community the police would know them they would know them by name you know we have situations like that around here where you know there are people that are constantly in trouble with the law and i think that would have sent up a red flag but because it was in different states you're mm -hmm. you know she's hopping around and and we talked about you know believe it or not jenny worked a day shift i did so she's on there telling everybody People were, oh, yes, I was. Yes, she was. She was telling everybody. And so they were asking us all these questions about the case because a lot of these people have not heard of this case or don't really know anything in depth about it. Mm -mm. And so they were asking us a lot of questions. And, you know, I was just explaining to them, like, you know, and it's easy to see. You know, we have a video called Hindsight's 2020. It's easy to see when someone is using such heinous um, information in the story. And so, you know, we told the example of Susan Smith. We told some other examples with Lori where the things that they're accusing people of are so heinous that, it, you know, first of all, it almost you know, takes you back a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you were the person that she's telling this to. Yes. And you just think, uh, we talked about Sherry Papini case, mm -hmm. where she contacts her ex-boyfriend and she tells him that her husband is raping her yeah. and beating her and the police will do nothing about it. And so... 
And he believes her. And he believes her. And so you almost seem like a, uh, you know, that your heart is just not with this person if you question mm -hmm. at all what they say. Because of the things that they're Because of the things of. that they are saying are just so um, against all moral code in society mm -hmm. across the board, right? Right. Across the board. So I just, I just feel like she, you know, was just a master manipulator. Oh, she, she was teaching master classes in this. Mm -hmm. Even though I do not think she's really that, what we call intelligent. No. But I think that she was intelligent in manipulation, lying, cheating. Yes. Those types of things. Um, but yeah, so then we got a mugshot. I know. Oh my goodness. I mean. Okay, now Jenny <laughs> just looked at it. I did. Uh, yes, I, I, just I wanted to it. wait and have a fresh, a fresh, um, what, what am I trying to say? Reaction. Yeah, a fresh, fresh reaction. reaction. So, I'm like, her hair is colored. I, mm -hmm. I mean, they color her hair in the mental institute. I do not think they do that at our hospital, do you? We don't have hairdressers come in. Well, we're not a state mental facility. Well. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I did look up. I, you know, I did a little digging. And I did, I did look up and it said that part of their treatments in the mental institution is for the person to feel good about themselves. So, um, to shower, to groom, to, you know, participate in cutting their fingernails, even though they have to be very particular with that type of thing. So that's kind of like a weapon, but, um, that they do want them to feel good about themselves. Okay. Okay. I have a problem with this. I have a major now, problem now, with it. I have a major problem with it. If you have somebody with mental illness that is in the mental facility long term, they're not accused of any crime. Yes. And they need these things for their healing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But if I you. I think that's a very vital part of the treatment. Absolutely. But if you are in a mental institute for mental competency, which is a very low th threshold, we had to educate a lot of people at work about it. They didn't really understand. It's very low. I mean, yeah. it's basic. So, I, I mean, she should not have access to any of that. Give her a shower if she wants a shower. But uh, yeah, these, these people should not be paying to get her hair colored. Because you know, the state of Idaho. It's the state of Idaho. The taxpayers paid for Lori to get her hair done. Give me a break. Uh, she had makeup on. Did you see it? I did. It didn't look good. It, it I no. mean, her eyes didn't look good, but I mean, she she did have makeup on. She had makeup on. She looks all sunk in. You zoomed in on her eyes, and I just uh, they look like they've they're really uh, her facial features themselves. Um, tell a different story. Oh, yeah. She, yes. So, either she manipulated somebody in there to, or manipulated the system, which do we doubt, um, that to get her competent, she needed X, Y, and Z. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, well, she's a manipulator, so that's probably exactly what happened. Yeah. And she was in there for 10 months. Right? Yeah. I mean, she should, um, that's she ridiculous. looked one way going in, she looked another way coming mm -hmm. out. Now, she probably will look a different way on Tuesday, which I did think, I, I think that the judge now has said, we can't watch it. I'm not kidding, Jenny. I'm not kidding. Why? I, I have never in my life, I don't understand, I do not understand that the defendant is given all of this just bending over backwards to protect all this stuff and the state of at least Arizona for sure mm -hmm. 
didn't do a daggum thing to protect Charles. No. Protect Tylee or JJ, and the state of Idaho did nothing to protect Tammy Daybell. Mm -mm. Nothing. No, not at all. So, why? I mean, what is their reasoning for saying it can't Well, be? they kind of said they, they, you know, they she might do something or act out and, you know, they don't want that portrayed and I just, what it is is she got the blowout. She's got her hair done. She's got her makeup on. And we noticed, what else does she have on, Jenny? Some sweatshirt that we're trying to figure out what. A hoodie. It's a hoodie and it's got, well, I mean, I know, I'm sure most of you have already seen it. With the, it's got stars and then a star, a yellow star on the left arm. We don't know if it's like army or it looks kind of like an yeah. army star on the right on the left arm the top of yeah the, so top if anybody of can figure out what that shirt is we've been trying to figure out i mean they're just letting her wear her regular clothes i just don't she understand. looks like i'm gonna tell you what she looked like she looked like when she was in hawaii um not in jail mm -mm. um and she's standing at that counter renting that car where that woman knew about the case of the missing kids and was tapping on the window because she had rode in a like a little shuttle with them oh yeah that's right and she had rode in a shuttle with them and she knew exactly who they were um but she said they were walking around like nobody knew who they were like just above it all i, I mean i guess they thought they were transparent beings at that time i guess right yes and so but this woman, it's making her sick to her stomach, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To see them, they're in Hawaii. They're, you know, they're just being flippant about it, and the children are missing, and they're acting like they're on vacation, and so they're in there renting a car, and so she gets up the nerve to tap on the window, and she mouths to her, "Where are the children?" Because she wanted her to know. Um, and I give all props to this woman. Uh, absolutely, me too. She wanted them to know. Even though you're in Hawaii, you can't hide. We know that your children are missing and you've done something with them and we want to know where they're That's at. That's right. And so she kind of reminded me of that, like in those black oversized mm -hmm. clothes. And I'm just thinking, she kind of looks like to me, not like she's having a mugshot taken. No. Not like she's um, in jail. She looked like she had just taken a flight from somewhere and you're in relaxed looking clothes. And I don't know if it was cold and a um, sheriff's person gave her that sweatshirt to wear because it's cold. Let her freeze. I don't care if it's Let cold. Let her freeze. I don't care if it's cold. Do we care if it's cold? No. No. Is the ground cold? Uh, well, she Is the ground cold? Yes. That Tammy's in? That's right. That they're that, all that in. they buried yeah. JJ in. I mean, come on, let her freeze. She should not have any comforts. She gets so much compassion sent toward her because human beings, for the most part, are compassionate, are compassionate people. But I mean, they're just the vilest of vile. Yes, you know, and I I have um, a cousin who used to be a guard in a prison. I mean, she coming out with the facts now, y'all. She's just telling me this. Please, enlighten well, all of us. Well, because one thing that he said, you know, he said that these people are bad and these people do bad things. But as a prison guard, you're taught you need to show them some respect so they will show you respect Otherwise, it can cause, you know, he said sometimes they'll have young guards come in there that are, you know, trying to, I guess, I don't, I don't want to say bully up on the prisoners, but, you know, it kind of escalates things. I don't know that I could do it. And I can promise you I wouldn't be giving her a sweatshirt. If I... <clears throat> I mean, what do you think? How would you handle that? Well, if number they one, tell you that kind of thing. Number one, I'm going to say this. We are nurses. We have taken care of prisoners. We have. Have we not? We have. How did we treat them? 
We treat them with respect. We treat them like we would treat any other human mm -hmm. being. I've helped women give birth and they are handcuffed to a bed. Yeah. Their leg is handcuffed to a bed. I mean, it is surreal. And a prison guard is in there that they don't really know that cannot leave. They, you know, these, yes. these guards are in there. And that um, happened frequently in the emergency room where we took care of prisoners. And yeah, you had to. And I've taken care of a woman who mur murdered her child or her baby. See, now she's coming out with information I, I didn't know. And, um, in like a violent, um, not, I mean, I don't want to say it wasn't premeditated, but, you know, kind of like, um, the baby's crying, won't stop crying, that type oh. of scenario. And you're like sitting across from this person <laughs> and, you know, you're there to treat them medically. And you're you're but you're looking for something in them. Yeah, I'm I'm staring the woman up and down, up and down, up and down, and I'm looking for something that is going to tell me that how evil this woman is, right? I mean, that you could literally take the life of your child with your own hands, like. Um, but I couldn't really find it. I, I couldn't really. Of course, I didn't have that long of a contact with her at this at this at this time. But still, it was enough that I'm like, you know, I already know what she's accused of because it's been all over the news here locally, and um, she wasn't really any different that I could tell. That I could tell. Um, but you know, we take care of people all the time. That um, that's true. I mean. We do. And we do. And we have to, I mean, I don't want to say, I mean, we always have to use compassion. And you are using, you are being compassionate when you take care of people mm -hmm. who have done these things. Because, you know, nursing, that's what you do. That's what you have to do. Well, you're, yeah. yeah. It's, and, it's called and the I, art of nursing. Taking yes. care of, um... You know, man is created in God's image, and that's what you're taking care mm -hmm. of. And and I I feel like probably um, these guards, I mean, they realize that it makes their job easier. I mean, they can't just be being mean to these people all the time. But I do think there's limits. There there's there is a difference in being compassionate and respectful to these to people, a human being to a human being even if they don't deserve it let me say that even if they don't deserve it but it's going too far if we're doing hair color makeup making her comfortable in a sweatshirt there's a difference in respect and making her overly comfortable and i think her manipulation she will continue to do that in prison as long as she mm -hmm. lives. She will continue to manipulate to try to get what she wants. Well, that's her. That's her. That's her DNA. Oh yeah. Um, well, she will have other mug shots, right? Um, somebody did write on Twitter, which I, th I thought, you know, that's why. That's why it's good to like, you know, just kind of look or glimpse at these other things because people will say things mm -hmm. that you're like. Well, I hadn't thought about that. And somebody thought, maybe she's going to do a plea deal. And this was part of it. She knew that this mugshot would be shown for the world. And, you know, I don't know how often they have them. Um, you know, it seems like 10 years, you know, when they're long-term prisoners, you know, it seems like it's a couple of mm -hmm. years go by before they have another one. So, maybe that's what it was. Um... I mean, I really thought she was going to come out with some wild, wiry, frizzed out hair. Um, I really did think that. Well, I mean, her other mug shot, like, didn't, didn't she have one? Was she? she I, mean, I don't know if it was her. The one where she was in the um, prison, that, that photo of her in the, not her mug shot, when she was in court. When she was right. in court with her Kool-Aid lipstick. I mean... 
I, I kind of expected at least her to look like that. Not with her yeah. hair blown out. And, I mean, and... I I have my I need my <laughs> hair colored. And she's coming up in here. Oh my goodness. I do think that um <clears throat> I do think that she will look different on Tuesday. I don't know if we'll see it. I hope we at least see some drawings or I something. Hope so. Um but I do know that to maintain blonde, you got to have some purple shampoo. And I don't think purple Kool-Aid works the same. Oh, no. What do you think? I'm sure you're right. Let's hope she now, does she try a, that. And is, she, she is a hairdresser. She is a hairdresser. So she may know some kind of so, well, tricks or... I'm just saying that she could have told somebody if you bring these supplies and talk somebody through what to do. I don't know. I don't know. I was a little disappointed in her in her um overall appearance yes. i did think that her facial structure her eyes those things kind of um told a different story but mm -hmm. you got to look you got to really look past yeah the blonde wave of blowout going on here but when you when you um zoomed in on her eyes mm -hmm. You know, she may look like she is aged, has a little more stress, but I don't for a second believe it's stress of remorse. It's unless it's remorse from being caught. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I shouldn't judge, but that's what I feel like. Yeah. So, I don't know. It was interesting interesting week for sure it was interesting she called me and said somebody just sent me a message i need you to start looking up i was like oh my goodness that's right that's right but um i don't know i just hope that now we're on the path moving forward yes there's no more shenanigans i don't think mark means and archibald are in the same league mm -mm. i think archibald is probably going to be like uh, let me let me tell you your best deal here. So you think she'll take a plea deal? I don't know. I mean, I one one part of me, you know, I want her to with conditions, right? But then again, I want her to sit in trial and hear it all, mm -hmm. see it all, made to look at it all. Yeah, I think that's I, um, that's what I want to happen. I want her to have to sit there and listen and. I hope it's very difficult for her. And she's a narcissist, so, you know, um, she might take it all the way to the nth degree. That's true. Because we've seen it before. Because she, yeah, because she, she, she probably turned on Chad before it's over with. Well, you know, we'll just, that's, uh, you know, that's another interesting part, you know, is how are they going to do? How were they, you know, because right now they're going to be together and, the, and their text messages are together and they were together and they were in the storage thing mm -hmm. together and they, you know, went to Hawaii together. And so it's going to be a little bit difficult her, for her. Yes. Um. You know, maybe if she had talked like Melanie Gibb talks all the time, that airy talking like the planet uh, you know, all of these things, and you know, you can just tell that Melanie Gibb ain't ain't founded in a uh, lot of reality, no. right? No. But Lori sounds like, I mean, she could have, she was trying to sell ice to Eskimos. Well, and that's right? it. I think that's the difference. I think you know, you got Melanie Gibb sitting back here, like, well, you know, I wasn't sure, but uh, you know, they this is what they're saying, and just. I don't know, acting like, well, I kind of believed him, I kind of didn't, but you've got Lori, who is obviously manipulating all these people and saying all these things. And With like, these. And, that's right, and like our With friend, these. our friend Kim had said before, too, all those text messages were probably code, the whole conversation, not just the names and you know, I still believe 
Melanie Gibb can sit back there and act like, oh, I just kind of believed it. She knew exactly what was going on. Well, um, I did see, and I think I told you this the other day, um, it was one of those documents that they said that on December 5th of 2019, they interviewed someone and that person confirmed that the children were dead. December 5th, mm. as before Alex dies, as before Tammy's exhumed, right? That's crazy. You think it was probably Melanie Gibb? To um, get they think it was, out of trouble? They think it was Ian or... Oh. It was the only two people that were interviewed on December 5th was Ian or Ian's wife. Oh, okay. Ian's ex-wife. Um, but if Ian knew... Yeah. Melanie Pilowski knew. That's right. And Melanie Gibb in that interview. She said the children are no more. Yes. Yes. And then they find the kids. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, so many more people involved that, you know, you wonder where, how are they feeling now? Do you think they have a conscience at all? I doubt it. Yeah, me too. I doubt it because I, I'm going to tell you. Um,. Me and you, best friends. Yes, we are. But if you said to me, you know, that you want me to kill your husband or be part of it, you know, you would see some hesitation, some distancing, not us meeting together, having these prayer yeah. circles, and, you know, trying to summon the earth, sun, and fire. Right? That's right. And you would be saying, Jenny. <laughs> what is, you know, I think we need to go get you some help. I mean, you would. Because if you truly care about this person, you know something is wrong with That's them. Right. If they are saying these things. So, yeah, I think. And if then if, I mean, you would, I would go, I love her. But I'd go to the police. And then I'd be like, we need to get her some mental help. This is not her. That's right. we got to intervene. we got to put a tracker on the car. we got to do something. we got to do something. Let me tape some conversations. Yes. Let me help. Yeah. She's a danger to herself and others. Absolutely. These people, not only, not only did they not do those things. I mean, they were giving them the green light. They were clapping them on. Mm -hmm. They were cheering them on. They were saying, go get it. Go get it. Exactly. Go get it. Yeah. Doing their little prayer meeting. Oh, I just. Okay. So let me ask you this. If when they when she had to go for that mental health check you know when when charles went and they brought her in there mm -hmm. if they had found out that she was crazy admit and then involuntarily committed her at that point mm -hmm. Do you think it would have been a different outcome, or do you think she'd have just played and manipulated them, even if she was committed and they said, yeah, this girl's crazy. We're going to keep her in here for some treatment for a while. Do you think they would have found her? I mean, do you think it would have changed, or do you think she just would have manipulated them and we would have had the same outcome? First of all, I do not believe she's crazy. No. Right? I don't either. I think she's I believe she later. went into that. She knew that Charles had ordered this mental evaluation and they had granted it. I think that you know, it is my opinion that her nor Chad Daybell believe none of this crap that they're spouting out about seeing beyond the veil, about probations, and we were married before, and, and these being previous lives, and translated beings. And I'm gonna tell you how you know. They wasn't caught in a closet trying to teleport to Hawaii. <laughs> they got on a plane, they bought a ticket, like you and I would yes, have to do. Yes, exactly. So they knew they were not translated beings. And that they could not teleport anywhere. Did they buy toilet paper? They did. Do did they, they go to the bathroom? Yes, yes. Did she text anybody? I just got up. I was asleep. I'm tired. I mean, come on. 
come on. These are the kind of things I would be throwing right at her. Absolutely. Too. If you're translated, why did you buy a plane ticket? Mm -hmm. Why did you search flights? That's right. If you're translated, I mean, you know. So number one, I don't. I do think she probably went in for this evaluation, and I think she probably glided through it because here's the difference: they're not probably looking for a narcissist, right? They're looking for, are you saying that you're a god, that you're this religious being, that, you know, you can make fire come out of your hands, and you got those wild eyes, and... And, of course, she's just saying no to yeah, all those. she's like, yeah. he is crazy. And so, if you go back and look at Charles's body cam footage, we understand why he looks amped up because he cannot get anybody to listen to him. The pressure is building and building. He knows it. He does know. He knows it. And he knows exactly what she's capable of. And we know that love is blind. And we know that to some degree, when she's going through all these court things with Joseph Ryan, Charles Vallow is at least dating her, early married to her, so he is probably witnessing her rant and her um, just get on him and not get off, yeah. Yeah. right? That's right. And put him through the ringer, mm -hmm. okay? So, just like everybody else who came into contact with Lori Daybell, Charles took her at her word, right? Because yes. she's probably this petite-looking, um, blonde hair, blue-eyed, just... Acts like the victim, needs to be rescued. Right, oh. the whole world is against me. Mm -hmm. I need to be rescued, right? Yes. And so, now he's feeling it, right? And so, he knows. It's, he knows it's building, and he knows... And they ain't even... Probably the story hadn't even half been told no. of the stuff that went on between her and Charles. We only know the stuff that's actually in an email, text mm -hmm. message, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, I mean, and I him on the body camps. Feel, I feel bad for him for all he probably had to deal with living with that woman. I can't imagine. And his child yes. is with her. Yes. I mean, what? And, and here's the thing. This goes on a lot, right? Where... You know that one parent is volatile, off, but not enough, or you can't prove it enough to get your child not under their care. Well, and sometimes people will stay with a spouse like that because they... At least they're present. At least they're present. They child. can't send, you know, they don't have to send them off alone with them for, you know visitation and stuff like that so they'll do that because they feel like they're there to protect the child at least they feel like they are well charles was trying to make it work yeah he was doing because he's a good he man do. yes he was doing all he could do so i believe she went into that interview and she just I, i'm i'm sure that mental health professionals probably have looked at it i don't know that we'll ever see it because it is a mental evaluation but she probably just sailed right through it, walked right out. Yeah, that's sad. And so, therefore, because of that, I believe that the events that were set into play, it would have really taken someone to take Charles serious. Yeah. Um, and like you said, look at the narcissistic side of her. Uh, you know, no, she she doesn't need to be in a mental institute. We need to get this woman off the streets because she's dangerous. I mean, that's what, and that's what they needed to, to see. Right. <clears throat> and I don't know, in Arizona, you know, again, when you talk about um, <clears throat> were the police officers that they were encountering of the Mormon faith, right? Um Again, some of the things that we hear, like if you started saying that to us, we would be like, what? Mm -hmm. Right? But we haven't grown up hearing all of this stuff. No. And, and it being a part of our faith system, right? Right. So, it would have taken 
it would have just taken one person um, to really believe Charles, to really believe him. Yeah. Um, and to set into play something. To set into play something. Um, but unfortunately, no one did it. Mm -mm. And even if they would have believed him, but maybe didn't really know how to interact, but once he ended up dead, right? Then they should have done oh, some yeah. other power it plays. It definitely should It have. should have not gotten any further. I mean, I don't think, you know, I hate that any of it happened. Me too. But um, I do think that... Immediately, they should have had red flags. Like, yeah. we got to get... Yeah, we got to get her away from Bells and whistles should yes. have been going off. Yes. Through a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, so... I don't know. I don't know either. We Let's have see. to work Tuesday. Yes, and I... So, I won't be able to watch it live, even if we can. I don't know. But, Christian Kay and them are going to be in the courtroom. They're going to come out. She said okay. she was going to try to make lives to um, keep everybody updated. Okay, good. Um... I'm glad that they're going to be able to be oh, there. Oh, yes. Yes. Because Kay says, um, you know, and Kay is the reason that it broke anyway. Mm -hmm. Kay would not let it go. And thank God yes. for that. Yes. Yes. Um, and she said she wants her to know and him to know we're right here, That's breathing exactly down right. your neck every step of the way. Yeah. I, I'm glad that they, I mean, <clears throat> it's got to give them a, a bit of closure to be able to be there during this. It's, it's horrible. Well, they have to be. They, they they have to be there because that's what love demands. Mm -hmm. They are the voice. They are, even though it's silent, unfortunately. And I don't really understand why the court system allows that so much. But even though it's silent at this point right now, mm -hmm. um, they are the voice. For those victims okay. and um you know you stand just like we would in your for your loved one you stand up That's right them. and um i'm sure you know there's a whole army of people now right that's exactly right that are not going to let them ever forget or get away and there's a whole army of us that will just keep Mm -hmm. discussing different things and um, hopefully we can start to maybe get some laws changed about these cult members they won't be able to write books they won't be able to profit from this right. they won't be able to make movies um, that's exactly right and I'm gonna tell you right now the only reason that any of them any of them should get even be thought about a plea deal where they're not charged is if you are just connecting the dots, decoding the text, mm -hmm. drawing the pictures, just come clean with it. Come clean with it. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason. If you don't... Then no. I, I, I don't see how they help the state. Really, I don't. I don't. But, again, that's for another day. And, um... Yeah, you know, well, hopefully... Let's see. Well, I don't know what day we'll be able to meet next week to... But we'll get something out there after Tuesdays. Yeah, we'll get some. Yeah. Just might be later in the week. <clears throat> so we want everybody to have a happy Easter. Yes, happy Easter. Enjoy. Some people on spring break. Yes. Nurses or not, we don't get a spring no. break. Um, but people need caring. Yes. And that's our life's calling. Yes, we love to be it. there for. That's right people when they're in these vulnerable situations no matter who they are or what they've done and um you know you may not understand it but probably if i was face to face with Lori daddy bell or chad day bell in a medical situation i would do what i would do for any other human being and i know you would too mm -hmm. because that's just who we are it has nothing to do about them no, that's, right. And no, that it has it nothing has to, do, about to do with the love that we have in our heart for human beings. Yes. And when they're at their most vulnerable. That's right. So. Anyway. I hope that never happens because I, I hope mean, it never happens either. It take a lot of strength. But I, we but do we know do a nurse it. who has taken care of Blanche Taylor Moore. 
Yes. We do know that. We'll have to tell that story someday. We do know that. And she treated her just mm -hmm. like you treat anybody else, right? She's mm -hmm. on death row here in North yes. Carolina. Yes, she is. So, and you can't miss this because these people are chained to these beds. These people come with a police officer or armed guards that will not leave the room, no matter what's going on, no matter what you do, what you're doing in there, giving birth, do not matter what they're doing, they're standing in there to protect. Really, I think they're there to protect us, but probably also to protect the prisoner. And to make sure the prisoner doesn't That no try harm to take, comes to them or well, they don't try to escape yeah. or, you know, these things. So, you know, these things just come to us while we're sitting here talking. Yeah. We've never even talked about no, that. No, we haven't even done that. I mean, and we, you know, she worked in the labor and delivery. I worked in the ER, so we took care of them there. Now we work in recovery. We take care of them when they wake up from surgery. I mean, it's just, and the guards, I think, go into the operating room with them. I'm they dress sure. out, mm -hmm. honey, they dress out. They're going under anesthesia, but the guard is going in there. Yep. That I know in the state yep, of North Carolina. That's right. That I know. Yeah. And we do have a psych ward in our hospital. As far as I know, it's no beauty salon down there. Uh, no. I don't know about a state hospital, but as far as I know. Yeah, as far as I know, there's not. Because I have been in there. Yes, I have. I have too. transported people in there. Me too. And yeah, they're not getting. Nobody looked like they had been at the no, beauty salon. They did not. Or makeup or anything. Mm -hmm. So. With that said, yes, happy Easter. Happy Easter. And until next time, bye.